Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. And we begin here tonight. One person dead after being struck by a vehicle. This happened just a few hours ago on Hebe near near Babcock on the northwest side. San Antonio police say that a man was hit and killed by a truck driver and that person did stop and try to help. We're also told the person who was killed wearing dark colored clothes in a poorly lit area and was not in a crosswalk. To dig down deeper on the incidents like this, these tragic accidents are sadly happening all over town and one of the deadliest streets in our city, Calabra Road. That's what we've heard from San Antonio residents and safety advocates. And this year, accidents involving people and vehicles along that very road keep stacking up. In the last month, our KSAT team has told you about two deadly crashes there. The night team's Avery Everett spoke with local safety groups about why Culebra Road is at the center of so many problems. With car after car, calling Calabra Road congested can sometimes feel like an understatement. There's always an accident on Calabra Road. Crossing Calabra can be a challenge. But it's one that people face head on, and that's part of the reason people like Vincent Robinson say the crash statistics here are so scary. We're, we're losing life. It's not safe. In the last month, KSAC covered at least two crashes where people were hit by cars on Calaber Road. But we've seen even more crashes here involving bicyclists and motorcyclists. Labor road's a very busy road. And this comes at no surprise to San Antonio safety advocates. It is terrible how often we are seeing motor vehicles crash into pedestrians. San Antonio police say there have been more than 50 deadly vehicle pedestrian accidents across the city since the start of the year. But why is Calabra Road such a problem then? It's a reality for many residents trying to get off the bus and then cross the street. But here on Calabra on a few different stretches, trying to find any crosswalks, well, they're few and far between. There's a lot of blind spots. They're going to high rate of speed. That's why the city is searching for solutions and new funding could help fix deep rooted infrastructure issues. But until then, people live and die on the roadways and that can be avoided if we be practice more humanity. It is our role as drivers to yield to them um, and let them cross safely. We're trying to make sure that our families and our, our kids are able to mobilize without getting hit by a vehicle. Simple safety practices could save lives. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. We're learning more about a shooting in the heart of downtown. We first reported yesterday on the news at six. San Antonio police say two suspects were shot as they tried to break into a car in a parking lot near the River Center shops. The family that car belonged to noticed the two suspects trying to get into it. That's when a man and his son pulled out weapons and opened fire. A male suspect shot in his face and a female suspect also hit. Both of them were taken to the hospital. They're expected to recover along with the gunshot wounds. Each are facing charges in this attempted burglary. So we're going to show you some video now. Does that look familiar? Because we showed you this video a few weeks ago. It shows a pack of dogs attacking and damaging a police patrol vehicle on West South Cross and Priscilla Street. We also know that a woman was injured by those dogs. And today, San Antonio Animal Care Services labeled those dogs dangerous. So what does that mean? Well, it means that now their owner is going to have to meet a number of requirements in order to get their pets back. That person is going to have to go to safety classes, also get muzzles for those dogs. That person has 30 days to do that, but until then, the dogs are going to be in ACS custody. Man in Wilson County facing charges for making terroristic threats last week. More than 100 firearms found in his home with tens of thousands of rounds of ammunition. The Wilson County Sheriff's Office says Johnny Carville called two different hotlines in Comal County and said he was going to commit an act of mass violence. He was arrested in a statement. Wilson County Sheriff Jim Stewart said, quote, our office will always take these calls seriously and pursue any and all avenues to prevent and stop any threat of violence to any individual group or school in our community, end quote. Switching gears now, whether you own a home already or you want to, there is good news now that the Federal Reserve cut those interest rates. Right now, the key interest rate is down to 4.8%, which is down from 5.3, where it had been for 14 months. Lots of people who want to buy homes see that as good news, since it's going to be cheaper now to take out a mortgage. And this also helps out existing homeowners who want to eventually refinance their mortgage. The average 30-year mortgage rate today, or right after the Fed cut, was 6 0.15%. Uh, that's lower than the, it had been when we got close to 8 and 7%. And so people are starting to refinance. We expect that rate to come closer to the 6%. And as, as you get lower and lower rates, more people who had refinanced at those higher levels 
are going to absolutely take advantage of the inability to refinance and refinance into lower mortgage rates. And there's also more with that because leaders with the Federal Reserve are planning to announce more cuts through 2026. They're going to meet again the day after the election on November 6th. By the way, you may still have a lot of questions about the Fed cuts and also what they mean for you, if, especially if you have credit card debt. We explain all of this in greater detail. Just look for that article that you see on your screen. It's on our website, ksat.com. We are kicking off season two of our series, Know My Neighborhood, tomorrow. And this episode features the South Sand community. Here's a look. This neighborhood is a gem that no one's really you know, figured out yet. Yeah, I feel like people shy away from it because of like the aesthetic of it. But it's really nice. I like it. It's it's different vibe and it's different to the community. It's affordable. The houses are affordable. There's a history too, a sad and a bad. Back then, Kelly was a place that everybody wanted to be at. There are a lot of larger families in this particular area. There's a lot of elderly people as well. All those families can definitely benefit from more resources. Why do some neighborhoods have luxuries that we don't? My yard floods a lot. And I threw out, yeah, I had to grade the front to kind of push it to the sidewalk. Um, yeah, it, it's frustrating. We all grew up here and we get used to, you know, the place and, you know, we just want our kids to enjoy the same. The issues in this neighborhood go a little deep, right? And it starts, there's a lot of metabolic disease, diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol. We're talking about strokes, we're talking about amputations. We're talking about losing the ability to work due to chronic illness. This whole section is tires and trash. It's just ridiculous. We care about the land that we live near. I can't picture myself living anywhere else. I've never moved away, and I don't plan to. Know My Neighborhood South Sand, Pride and Perseverance. It's tomorrow live at 6 o'clock. Now, if you're not familiar with the series, it's one we started last year to highlight different neighborhoods that make up our city and the issues the people that live there think are important. We talk about the good, the bad, the frustrating, straight from the people that call these neighborhoods home. So tune in tomorrow at 6 o'clock for our South Sand Pride and Perseverance show live from Taqueria, Mexico off Somerset Road. Hope to see you there. I can't wait to see that. That looks like it's going to be a good one. Well, they're all good, right? Our KSAP <laughs> community partners, very busy this month. Happening tomorrow, Stephanie Serna is going to host a town hall, and the topic is the importance of mentorship for high school students. And I can say that for me because I also had a mentor who made a huge difference for me. So that's happening at 2 p.m. tomorrow, and we're going to be streaming this on all of our KSAP platforms. Also, this month is Hunger Action Month. It's the perfect time to donate to the place that feeds more than 100,000 people in our area every week. Right now on ksatcommunity.com, find out how to help the San Antonio Food Bank and also the people that it supports in our community. Also gearing up for this year's Head for the Cure 5K. It is on September 28th at Providence Catholic School. That's across from the KSAT 12 studios downtown. KSAT supports Head for the Cure in honor of our former news director, Jim Boyle who died of brain cancer. All the money from the event goes to brain cancer research. For more information, visit ksatcommunity.com. If you've driven through Terrell Hills lately, you may have seen these. They're license plate readers, and there's 10 of them throughout the community. Tonight, like we speak with the Terrell Hills Police Chief about the added safety measures, how much they cost, and where the data they capture will be stored. A lot of times it was me going across the river walk, like in one of those pictures, and think about where I'm going to be able to sleep at the next night or something like that. But while I was doing it, I was still taking pictures. You're going to want to hear that man's story. A big thank you to San Antonio and the people who helped him through a rough period in his life. Next up on the Night Beat, we're going to introduce you to the street photographer who's now giving back. Next time you drive through Terrell Hills, you may notice something new. These things, they're license plate readers. The city recently added 10 around their community. The night team's John Paul Baraja sat down with the police chief there to discuss the added safety measure and also to explain how it works. It will help solve cases a lot quicker. We mainly deal with property crimes here in Terrell Hills. 
License plate readers are now up and running in the Terrell Hills community. Terrell Hills Police Chief Gail Baham explains it's one more crime stopping tool they're excited to have at their disposal. Our residents, a lot of them have ring cameras and those have worked for us in the past. So having a, um, a license plate reader on entry points into the city to be able to capture vehicles going in and out during the time frame that a crime has occurred is just crucial. Chief Baham says the 10 devices went up almost two weeks ago at the following locations. To name a few, there's one at Eventide and Harry Wurzbach, Garrity in North New Braunfels, and South Van Diver and Ritterman. She adds the license plate readers are already being used in a few cases and will help the department react to crime, but also be proactive. If another agency has a vehicle they're looking for and they come through our city and our camera catches it, and notifies one of our officers, they can act on it immediately. We spoke to a handful of people in Terrell Hills off camera. Many were unaware of the new changes and were indifferent. Others seem to be on board. What do you say to anybody who's afraid that they might be coming out in these pictures? All I can say is that the, the, the data we get from these are not um, an open records qualified. But as you can see, it's quite difficult to see who's driving the vehicle because of the focus is on the license plate. As for the cost, it came out to roughly $60,000. Chief Baham tells us 27% was paid for by the city budget. The other 73 was covered by the police department's asset forfeiture fund and when they used to have a task force officer assigned to the DEA. A portion of the asset forfeiture that they seize, um, we get a portion of that. If you have any questions regarding the license plate readers, you can call Terrell Hills PD at 210-824-7401. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. I love this story tonight. That man right there discovered one of his passions during a very rough period in his life. And now he's using that passion to give people hope. Yeah, these photos that you see up on the wall there were taken by Charles Chandler while he was experiencing homelessness. Now they're being shared by the group that helped him get back on his feet. These images show different areas of San Antonio and they're being showcased in the Sam Ministries shelter lobbies. And as Charles says, each photograph has a story behind it. Boy, does it. I'll look at something and find very interesting or a different angle or something like that. But then I started focusing on it when I was actually homeless downtown in San Antonio. And instead of feeling down and what, what it's, what's gonna happen from the next day to the next or something like that, I decided to do that photography at that point in time. And I've seen some amazing things. Wow, and we asked him about what drove him to share his photos. Charles said that it was a great opportunity to give back to both Sam Ministries and also the city of San Antonio. Wow. Inspiration's where you find it. Yes, yes. All right, so we are in a pattern, <laughs> Adam Kasky, and it is a pattern of heat and humidity right mm. now. Yeah, it sure is. And, you know, today, earlier this afternoon, our heat index got up to 106. So that's the feels like temperature when you factor in the humidity. And going forward, it's going to be similar the next couple of days until the afternoon dew points start falling off a bit. So notice the heat index tomorrow back up to about 104 actual air temperatures topping out around 97 just like today. That's going to be the case into the weekend and then early next week we see the little little downturn in temperatures. Now I want to point this out. This was a picture of a rainbow taken earlier this evening and in order to have that rainbow in the evening hours, you need some raindrops out there and some of those bubbling cumulus congestus clouds did throw some raindrops toward the ground. We were extremely lucky in a few locations and that was taken I-37 I Pecan Valley here on the south side and notice the rainfall detected by radar up to about a tenth of an inch, 410 and East South Cross Boulevard. You go down near Calaveras Lake, 181 and Cassiano about a tenth of an inch, not far from the Crank Ranch down that way. Very, very isolated activity and even the next couple of days. Yeah, a few of those bubbling clouds could drop some rain, but it's going to be few far between and uh, and rare. Overall, the upper level heat high is taking charge and it's actually going to center itself overhead 
in the coming days, and that's, I think, really going to help suppress some of those uh, cumulus clouds from dropping any rain, especially by this weekend. And it's also going to deflect active weather around us. So this disturbance here that was coming in, it's going to be pushed to the north of us because of that blocking high. But indications are now there's more agreement that that high is going to get out of here and move to Florida by the early and middle part of next week. And that opens the door for disturbances to move overhead. We just need said disturbances and there's potential we could tap into one depending on how this very erratic type of uh, long range pattern pans out. We could actually have one nearby and that reintroduces rain chances back into the forecast at least a little bit of hope for early next week. I know right now it's at 10% Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That could easily change and we could bump those numbers up. We just need a little more data. So there's something to look at and something we'll keep you updated on as we get more info. Look at our temperature trend today. 97 here in San Antonio. That's seven degrees above average and just two degrees shy of the record for the day. You look at the 90s, stretch all the way up. Omaha, Nebraska, 90 degrees. Chicago was 88. St. Louis, 91. South Dakota, up here, almost 90 degrees. The bump, the ridge, the bump in the upper level flow from the late season heat high stretching northward. Conversely, where you get these dips in the upper level flow, not bad. I mean, 72 in Boise, Salt Lake, 73. Vegas, 86 for a high temperature. Not bad. Last night we were talking how Vegas had a high of like 82 yesterday because of that nice trough that they have. We're still waiting on our trough and I think it's going to be a little bit of time. I do want to point out over the next seven days, a small chance of development in the Western Caribbean. Very low end chance, but beyond then, longer range indications from Climate Prediction Center and some model data actually has slightly higher chances between September 25th to August 1st. So basically over the next two weeks, we'll be watching this area. And if something does develop, it's open game wherever it could go into the Gulf of Mexico, potentially. Uh, we just have to keep an eye on it and look for development. Ideally, it'd just be an unorganized uh, area of moisture and a lot of tropical rain that would move our way. But uh, we can't count on that, of course. 77 tomorrow morning with the low clouds, the 90 and sunny at noon, 97 the high temperature, feeling like it's up to 104 in the afternoon for a little bit. Del Rio 98 tomorrow, same with Pleasanton, and overall we're running above average, feeling a little more summer-like than fall-like, despite the equinox being at 744 a.m. on Sunday morning, and low 90s as we get into next week. And got to point out, it's mum season. Folks are posting their beautiful homecoming mums on KSAC Connect. Keep it up, folks. We love sharing them. Those are some impressive mums. They're starting to get bigger than the humans holding them. Yeah. <laughs> Monstrous mums. Monstrous mums. Like everything. It's all about Instagram, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's all about KSAC Connect now. Yes. That's right? That's true. You see a few of the clouds out there. They're, I wish they'd drop some rain, but they're not. Again, we got very fortunate on the southeast side earlier today with that brief shower, but don't count on it going forward. But we are counting on the Spurs. Yeah. Few weeks. And I love it when you get the scoop on what's happening between the teammates. <laughs> what's the deal with Mamu and Wemby? Well, the deal is they have a fantastic friendship and bond. And there was one situation that happened in New York City that Mamu really said, OK, Wimby, you are an awesome guy. And I'm so glad that we're friends. We're going to have that for you. Plus, the Cowboys defense, they're angry and they want to bounce back in a big way coming up. At the end of the day, it's all about toughness and having mentality like I'm going to dominate the man in front of me and not all of them had the, uh, last week. Micah Parsons wants the Cowboys defense to play with a more dominating attitude in big board sports. Spurs power forward Sandru Mamukelashvili was born in New York City and he grew up in the country of Georgia. He played college ball for Seton Hall, was drafted by the Indiana Pacers in 2021 and was traded to the Bucks in March of 2023. The Bucks waived him and the Spurs scooped him up and now he's entering his second full season with the silver and black. Manu Mamu won over the fans and Spurs head coach Greg Popovich. So yesterday we sat down with Mamu and we asked him about his relationship with Victor Wimbanyama. 
Uh, me and Wemby's bond is like it, it was created off the court. You okay. know, like okay. we like board games, we like stuff, like we like just we are both competitive, top golf, this, that. So, you know, I feel like it's just the European thing. We just kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. I think the bond was created for me a lot stronger when he came to the Georgian restaurant with me okay. in New York, and okay. it was like few of us. It was some some front office guys, uh, some people who work in the Spurs, and some strength coaches. So, and it was me, Wemby, as a players, and you know, the, like dive into my culture and talking about him about my culture about my food and okay. he loved the food so I was like okay like you know I'm happy that it happened I'm happy you don't have stomach issues because I would be in trouble but you know it was great just overall having having him there on top of his all-out hustle on the court Mamu is known for his trick shots like these right here throwing the ball over his shoulder to the length of the court and draining them something he started at a young age I feel like it was a, like I was I remember like I just started playing basketball and you know when you start playing basketball you're not good at the layup you're not good at shooting you're not good at dribbling so you got to do something so I just started throwing some shots up when I was a young kid and you know sometimes you get lucky and you just toss it it goes in and I feel like at that point it makes you happier than than making the layup because right. you miss a lot of layups so um I feel like that kind of grew into kind of being my little thing where like you know let me try this let me try that so you know the more you see you go in then the more of the new trick shots you want to unlock so and I feel like it's just something I really grew up with and and I just love doing it. Well, we love watching it. That's thank for sure. you, thank you. I, I got some more in the books coming in, so you know I'm gonna work on it, and I'll show you guys. <laughs> now we're looking forward to it, Mamu. We also sat down with Julian Champigny, and we'll hear from the three and D guy tomorrow. The Dallas Cowboys signed defensive tackle Carlos Watkins off the Washington Commanders practice squad to replace Jordan Phillips, who was moved to the IR with a wrist injury. Watkins, who played with Dallas from 2021 to 22, is joining a Cowboys defense that is looking to bounce back from getting smacked around by the New Orleans Saints to the tune of 44 points allowed. Linebacker Micah Parsons is unhappy with the D and says they need to figure things out and quickly. At some point, you know, all 11 got to have the same mindset, and that's just toughness, right? You talk about who you want to be and all this other stuff, but you got to go out there and be it. And it can't just be one guy. It can't be two guys. It's all 11 guys. It takes everyone. This is a great opportunity. This is what we love doing. This is what we want to do. Let's go out and do it, you know? What I mean? And you're going to get hit in the mouth, you know? It's like, that's, you know, you wipe the blood off and get going. Let's go. Wipe the blood off, yeah. The boys' defense is angry after getting pushed around. The Ravens are mad because they're 0-2. Dallas will host Baltimore Sunday at 3.25 p.m., and Baltimore is currently favored by one point. The Roadrunners lost, but feel they got better after the break. At 1-2 this season, the UTSA Roadrunners will look to get back in the win column when they host Houston Christian from the Southland Conference Saturday afternoon. UTSA started off the season by beating Kennesaw State 28-16 at the Dome, and then they dropped their next two games on the road, 49-10 at Texas State and 56-7 at then number two Texas. They're now the number one team in college football. The Bobcats loss really hurt the Roadrunners a lot, and although the Horns won by a comfortable margin, UTSA cornerback Zay Frazier feels the Roadrunners improved Saturday in Austin. I feel like we played better. Like I mean, if you if you just do what the triangle say, I mean, I feel like if you if you play by the triangle, you're going to play good and just doing your 111. That's all, you know, it's part of the process. It's doing your job. It was just more energy to this game because we knew it was going against like number one now, the number one team in the uh, country. We knew where it was at state. We knew who they were. Like so we just came with the energy like we don't fear nobody. So that's how that was. Saturday's matchup against Houston Christian is UTSA's annual Hispanic Heritage Game and salute to first responders. That contest is set for 2.30 at the Alamo Dome. Go out there, welcome UTSA home. Yes. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, and we'll be right back.